Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. It's been a little while since I shot a new video because I've been uh, settling into a new place, but boy have I got something for you today. Whatever I put in the title uh, was not clickbait. This is a radio with such a dangerously negligent design that in the absolute best case scenario, it'll damage the batteries you put in there. And in the absolute worst case scenario, it'll damage the batteries you put in there to an extent where it can start a fire. This is the MD-306 radio. I got it on AliExpress for like $8 after coupons. And I mean, it seemed like it would be a nice little unit. It seemed like it would sound decent. But something that did appeal to me is its two power sources. You can either run it from an 18650, which it ships with, or 2D batteries which you supply yourself. Little did I know that the design of this two battery system would be so horrible that it is genuinely one of the most dangerous electronic devices that I own. Let's start off with that 18650 that it shipped with though. So this little guy is of course 3.7 volts, 800 milliamp hours. And as you might be able to see, it doesn't have any protection circuitry. There, the nub is just soldered straight onto the top of the 18650 battery that you can see through that transparent film. Now, 800 milliamp hours for a radio that also accepts D batteries is pretty funny because on paper at this current draw, a D battery has about 20 times the capacity of this 800 milliamp hour battery. And also, this 18650 is so cheap that the battery spring actually dented it. It is damaged by the spring. So this is a, a really nice high quality battery. But, I mean, it's a $10 radio. I wasn't expecting a super nice battery to come with it. However, the problems arise when you put D batteries and an 18650 in the radio simultaneously. Now, damages from putting both battery types in at the same time could be chalked up to user error if it was mentioned in the manual or on the box or on the product listing that you shouldn't put both in at the same time. However, there is no manual. Nowhere on the box does it say that. And also, I would expect any modern electronic device to have at least any sort of protection circuitry for a lithium battery. Uh, but as you're about to see, there are so many ways that this is just terrible and horrible and dangerous. So what I'm about to demonstrate is that the 18650 and the 2D batteries are run in parallel with absolutely no switching circuitry. So it only uses the D batteries once the 18650 is drained or something. No, they're constantly connected and in parallel, even when the radio is off. And if you've ever put things in parallel, you'll know that the voltage equalizes. That's a problem when you've got two batteries that add up to three volts at maximum and another battery that's close to four volts. I'm going to test these batteries and then I'm going to put them in the unit and you'll notice very, very quickly what starts to go wrong. One of our D batteries here is at 1.48 volts, really nice solid voltage for an alkaline. And the 18650 is at 3.21, nice voltage, um, although a little low for an 18650. So we've got 1.48 and 3.21. We put them together, and let's wait about 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds has passed. Let's uh, give this 18650 another test. Already it's dropped 0.1 volts, while the D battery is up to 1.7. So I'm gonna take this out immediately. So, in only 30 seconds of being connected, the 18650 has already charged the D batteries. Now, you can charge alkaline batteries 
there's a safe way to do it. However, the super high potential current output uh, that an 18650 is capable of, like the, the current draw that an 18650, even a cheap one like this, can support, is uh, way, way, way faster than should be going into an alkaline battery. If this can charge your batteries up to 1.7 volts just in 30 seconds, imagine what it could do if you leave the 18650 and the D batteries in there for hours on end. I think you might be starting to see why this is dangerous, but it's, it's only the start. So of course this could make your alkaline batteries leak. If you've got nickel metal hydride or NICAD batteries, overcharging them and at this rate can be dangerous. I mean, that can damage your batteries, but nickel metal hydride and NICAD batteries won't violently explode. What will is if you have lithium batteries in here, like uh, single use ones like Energizer Ultimate Lithium, or if you have those lithium batteries that you plug a USB cable straight into the battery, um, those aren't supposed to be charged in this way or at this rate, and uh, they could explode. Now that 18650 isn't the only way to charge the non-rechargeable D batteries though. If we put only two D batteries in here, take the 18650 out, set it on the desk, and I grab a USB power bank and plug it into the top. The power bank turns on, and so does the red charging LED on the unit. So that means that the power bank is outputting power into the unit and the red light means that it's charging. And uh, let's poke and prod at those D batteries again. And we're gonna see that voltage coming up once again to a dangerous level. Holy shit. That's horrifying. I mean, if we unplug the USB, it'll probably be a little... Okay, yeah, alkaline batteries don't hold that charge level for very long. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you could see that the USB is charging the D batteries. It is putting 5 volts through the D batteries, each one of these, if left plugged into the USB with D batteries in it, each one of these would charge up to two and a half volts, which is absolutely nuts. That is not safe at all. So if you were to say the D batteries in here die and you're like, oh, that's fine. I've got a USB charger. You plug it into the, the charging port on top and listen to some music thinking, oh, it'll know not to charge the D batteries. I can just use it plugged into the wall for a while. Little do you know, while you're listening to your music, your D batteries are charging to a seriously dangerous level. Now, if you'd taken even an entry level electrical engineering course, you would know that if you have a battery at 4.8 volts and a battery at 3.6 volts, they'll average out to 4.2 volts if you run them in parallel. Do you get what I'm getting at here? So, the unit stops charging 18650 batteries at 4.2 volts. D batteries charge a hell of a lot slower than 18650s. So, if you have both in there and you plug it into a charger, the significant voltage difference between the two battery types will cause the 18650 to be dangerously overcharged. Let's use that example. Um, if your D batteries are only at 3.6 volts, which is too high for D batteries anyway, and your 18650 is charged all the way up to 4.8, That'll average out to 4.2 volts, the cutoff voltage for charging an 18650.
So in reality, that means that the system will stop charging the 18650 way, way later than it ever should because the other two batteries are bringing down the average voltage while the 18650 continues to charge to dangerous levels. And once again, this is a cheap 18650 with no overcharge protection, absolutely nothing to limit its rate of charge or discharge. It's a completely unprotected cell. And if you have an unprotected cell, your device should be designed in a way where it can do the protection itself. Now, another problem that could arise is there doesn't really seem to be a minimum voltage cutoff. I've tested this and it'll drain 18650s well into the dangerously low range that can cause permanent battery damage. The op amp and radio chip in this set have a minimum voltage, minimum supply voltage, of barely over 2 volts. One of them's 2.1 volts, one of them's 2.2. That's fine on the D batteries. It'll drain them down to a little over 1 volt each. That's not good for an 18650. If you put the 18650 in there along with the D batteries, the voltage will once again average out. They'll hit an equal voltage. So that means your 18650 will be drained down to 2 volts flat, which is terrible for the battery. 18650s should never go below 2.5 volts, and really it should be kept closer to 2.8 as the absolute minimum that you discharge them to if you want them to last a while. So, I mean, I guess that's the, the least bad of the problems, because it's a lot better to over-discharge these than to overcharge these and also overcharge non-rechargeable batteries. But still, that's bad. I mean, it's going to ruin your batteries because it's discharging them far below the threshold that they should ever be discharged to. So I've shown you the fact that the 18650 constantly wastes its power by draining into the alkaline batteries. I've shown you the fact that the alkaline batteries get dangerously overcharged when it's plugged into the USB. And I've explained all of the problems that come with running a lithium and two 1.5 volt batteries in parallel constantly with absolutely no protection. Now, I'm going to show you the circuitry inside of this thing because all of this could have been avoided so easily if they'd spent one more cent on the production costs. By the way, I don't recommend buying cheap alkaline batteries, but as soon as I figured out what this was doing to my batteries, I just grabbed some like cheap awful ones from the dollar store to demonstrate this. If you have like actually good alkaline batteries, the, the risk that this poses is significantly less. However, um, another way to lessen the risk that a device like this poses is by not buying dangerous shit. Oh yeah, something I didn't even mention is that it has a, uh, a flashlight on the end here. It looks about a hundred lumens brightness. I mean, it's okay in a pinch if you really need one. Just why this is so ridiculous that it's even a problem in the first place. There's our PCB. And as you can see, a couple things connect over little cables so they can be removed. One of them's the flashlight, one of them's the speaker, and one of them is the 18650 battery compartment. They connect to such different places on the board that I thought, surely there has to be some protection between them, preventing the lithium batteries from discharging into the D batteries with absolutely no limitations. No, 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 there's not. 
there's absolutely no circuitry to keep that from happening. Which is, again, I'm going to say it again, it, it's dangerous and it's negligent. And it's absolutely ridiculous that they considered this to be, like, okay and acceptable. Well, I'm going to wrap this video up here. There's not much else I, uh, I can show you. Because a device that charges alkaline batteries overcharges lithium batteries, undercharges lithium batteries, and uh, has absolutely no protections for any of the cells you put in it, well, that's a, uh, that's a pretty big problem. Well, I hope this was entertaining, seeing me dissect and uh, show off everything that's wrong with this. I hope you're convinced that you should absolutely never buy it. And yeah, just be careful when you're buying anything with a rechargeable battery that's not from a name brand. This problem also could have been alleviated extremely simply by just putting the 18650 slot perpendicular to the D batteries so you couldn't put both in simultaneously. That would have solved the entire problem. I mean, there's so many ways they could have fixed it. But yeah, that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. I hope you're, you know, convinced to never buy this or anything like it. And uh, yeah, hope, hope to see you next time.